As humans, there are things we experience no matter what part of the world we live in. You can think of them as universal truths. Stuff like happiness, pain, laughter, love, loss, and eggs. That's right, eggs. In just about every place in the world you can find eggs. And nearly every culture you talk to would recognize them. But even despite a global presence, the answer to the age-old question of the chicken or the egg still managed to cause debate. But as for the question which comes first, the Tunisian or the egg, well, anyone in Benton Park who eats breakfast can tell you the answer to that. This is Faisal, a Tunisian transplant to St. Louis, amateur historian. Tunisia is like a thousands of years old, so it has many influences. And purveyor of the Benton Park Breakfast Bud Egg Restaurant. Since 2013, he has taken the concept of the egg breakfast and fused it with different culture influences of his Tunisian homeland. We can all agree that eggs are universally familiar, unless you're talking about the eggs here. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a great meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world right here in St. Louis to find good food and experience other cultures. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart because food is love. Delicious. Food is love. Love your food. Mid-spring, life is moving along at its usual pace in the big city. Up early, I find myself elbow deep in Harissa learning the lines in the kitchen of Egg Restaurant. Faisal, one of the owners at Egg, is getting me familiar with the menu before our planned return trip one week later to film this very episode. Then it happened. In response to the pandemic, the world seemingly came to a halt. We were naive in the beginning, thinking in a few weeks we would be back on schedule, but it got worse. The city of St. Louis, like the rest of the world, were in some form of quarantine. Cases began to rise as the medical community struggled to keep up. Restaurants and businesses had to learn to operate under very limiting restrictions or completely shut down in some cases. Many will never reopen. There are others still who, against the odds, are making it work. It's been well over three months, but I'm coming to have breakfast with Faisal to get his thoughts on the current state of things. So business-wise, how are you doing now with all these restrictions, COVID restrictions? Not good. Every customer costs you more now. Take safety precautions, but come out and support the restaurants. It's, t it's tough. I'm super grateful for uh, our platform of friends and customers. They kept patronizing with us. They become uh, uh, the core of this business for me, you know, yeah. because no matter what, there is always support. With that particular support, yeah. for me, it'll keep me going, you know. I, I see that in my restaurants. People come in and they're spending money that they normally wouldn't because they know we're in trouble. The revenue and the money and all, and uh, the expense, like even now we yeah. cannot catch up, but yeah. we can rebuild in the future. The greatest city of St. Louis, we overcome many uh, obstacles and many disasters, you know, yeah. like we are uh, one of the greatest city in the nation from the 18th, 18th centuries all the way to the 19th centuries. This, this is it. This is the, yeah. the, the, the core and the hub of everything's happening around us. Uh, 1804, Louisiana Purchase, which is that opened up the door wide for like a gateway to the west to become gateway to the west like st louis becomes the spotlight in the mississippi river we have like a mile of steamboats sometimes third way into the river sometimes like one mile two miles on the banks of the river the great fire in st louis 1849 uh, caused by steamboat and they try to to push the boat away to the from the city so the river will take it a windy day so the boat came back and would like engulfed other 25 steamer boats and it becomes the great fire. But you know, guess what? We rebuilt. We, we built the city and we kept living. Pandemic aside, keeping an egg-themed menu running, or from running maybe, requires its own measures. 
And if you didn't catch it, that was a yoke. One of the biggest challenges is how to grab the eggs without burst one inside the water. Yeah, that's the biggest, str biggest struggle at egg restaurant is the eggs. Keep the eggs. When it comes to building an order of pork belly Benedict, Faisal has reached level 10 mastery of his craft. Voila, it looks delicious. You have to taste it to understand. So do you have a favorite dish? Everything is my favorite dish because every dish it has a different character and different taste, different way to prepare it. Even though it looks simple to put it together, but it's very complex to reach the stage. See, this is kudos to you. This yes. egg is perfect. Yes. See how that is right here? Yes. Wow. Nice. That is perfect right there. Or like this too, huh? You know? Oh, look at that. So how did you, uh, how do you come up with the, the name Egg? So Egg, uh, Lassad, he, he come out with the, the, the name. Lassad, okay. my partner. Okay. Yeah. What I like about Egg, which is I love, I will not change the restaurant name from Egg. It'll give you the chance to explore through multiple dishes by just incorporate eggs. I mean, it has so many uses. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like we survived. And protein. it's in so, everything. Oh, it's like a protein, source of protein. It's like, yeah. like uh, the most, even like people, they don't eat meat, but they still eat eggs. Uh, shakshuka now, you can, you can find it from Barcelona all the way to Tel Aviv. It is delicious. Enjoy. Like at Egg, we have the opportunity to bring different civilizations together in one plate. Yeah. Like actually you can put like, bring different ethnic backgrounds and put it in one plate. Well, that's what makes the cuisine so interesting. Yes. The barbacoa or the carnitas or the merguez. We have a fantastic French toast okay. with a, a twist, European, African twist to it. Yeah, this is a barbacoa. It's one of my favorites. Actually, we serve this with a, in a sandwich too down in Midtown. We have a very okay. popular sandwich, barbacoa sandwich. It's amazing. The Spanish occupied, especially northwest of Africa, especially Tunisia, okay. for 47 years. The only good thing they brought with them is the there peppers. The, the peppers. peppers. Okay. But Anything else they did to us, yeah. I'm not a big fan. But at least I, they, I give them the yeah. credit of the harissa. So is there anything in the name harissa? What harissa mean? means crush. What's in here? This particular harissa, it's uh, pretty much the same family recipe. Uh, the only thing different about it is the peppers. I'm using it, take some bread. Okay. And then, because we use uh, like this, uh, your hand, like okay. that. And then, voila. Drinking and eating a harissa will open your appetite so you'll be able to eat more. We taste the garlic. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Garlic, extra virgin olive oil, coriander, a little bit salt. With this, we are uh, building a uh, pulled pork hash. Okay. Will be pulled pork with a little bit of uh, barbecue sauce, uh, breakfast potatoes and uh, nice coleslaw goes on top. One of our iconic dishes to serve okay. here. All right. And this is uh, the uh, barbacoa. We serve it over the grits. Also, we can make uh, a fantastic sandwich with this. So this is a, a chopped, cut small pieces of brisket. That sauce, that's the mole. It cooks in its own okay. mole. Looks fantastic. Ah, this is it. House-made chorizo. Chorizo, we use pork shoulders. Chorizo it has a lot of cinnamon, a lot of cumin. Uh, ancho peppers, mainly paprika. These are, this is the, the mole. So the mole, the mole sauce, we have it on the side for El Rancheros. We have a fantastic uh, huevos rancheros. I think one of the best. Okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding, you know. It's like <laughs> no. one of the best in town. But yeah. for us, we need, we need to have a fantastic egg like this, you know? See, it's always yeah. soft inside and the white is cooked all the way around. Yeah. So this is our cornbread. So the, what's make the our cornbread unique too? To, okay. Because we use two different two different type of uh, corn. We use Aztec corn, which is a, a corn native from the Midwest, blue corn or mm -hmm. purple corn, mm -hmm. and we use yellow corn. The Aztec corn changes the density and the complexity of the cornbread. The first stage of the the, the pork belly Benedict is the bread. I created a dessert from this cornbread. We call okay. it gâteau. Okay. Gâteau is cake, cake in French. Yeah. Okay. 
So what makes St. Louis a good fit for a guy from Tunisia? Well, for starters, of course, there is the French connection. For me to, be, to live in St. Louis for 22 years uh, without being fascinated by the history of it, uh, I would not be here today. But it's like it has a lot of similarity with, with where, where I came from. You know, yeah. like the city of St. Louis actually is funded by France. Like Pierre, like Lee. Tunisia were under French control for over 75 years leaving their mark on many aspects of their culture, including the language and the food. St. Louis, of course, has a strong French history of its own. See, there is many similarities. I never planned this. I never thought about it. I never thought I'm living from uh, French influence. And I end up here in St. Louis. It has like a, a French thick uh, history. After a quick tour of the building and a little about its history. Now, the Fight Club, this way. Okay. Women, for women only though. Huh? Okay. We, we're not involved in this fight club. Faisal is taking us across town to Egg's second location in Midtown. Welcome aboard. I never drove this car before, so hang on tight. <laughs> you tell me the name of this street, Met Gravel, right? Yes, so Gravois uh, was the first gravel road. French, this is the main investment they made a, the main road for the cotton, for the leather. So what do you think makes Benton Park unique to uh, the history, The history uh, background. It was a magnet for many immigrants, uh, Lassie. So people felt comfortable to live around here. And this particular city, demo, like demographically changed throughout the years. We're going to Midtown, yes? Okay. So tell me about that location. When did that come about? Uh, we opened maybe in late December, January, and we, we have to close our doors quickly after we opened because all this happened, the COVID and uh, <coughs> restriction. We've been open, like 25% like capacity, not too much business, but we have to survive, you know? Yeah, but it seems like you have a pretty positive outlook on the future, regardless of what's going on. Totally. Yeah, we, uh, I'm looking forward. After the Great Fire, most of people, when they rebuilt, they rebuilt around this neighborhood. We're talking about 1800s now, huh? This one has been around for ages too, right? This, specifically this house. It's interesting, a guy from Tunisia knows more about St. Louis than a lot of people live in St. Louis. This particular area, Midtown, the layout is changing, how people are coming back to rehab and reopen. And change the landscape and yeah. you have to take some risks with it and you have to be an uh, adventurous. And exactly this is what we're doing. We, we try to just follow it to see how, where, how far we can go with this. All right, this is Egg. Heather, good to see you. Look on Amazing, like usual. Steph is the same thing. You guys too, okay. okay. <laughs> the vibe at Egg Midtown matches the feel of the neighborhood. This is our second location. We covered the similarities of French influence and street names that sounds familiar. Knock, knock. What else could make St. Louis a good fit for All a Tunisian? Right. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with this guy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Well, how about another Tunisian? This is LaSalle, Faisal's business partner, captain of Egg Midtown, and fellow Tunisian. So you're both from Tunisia? Yes. yes. Okay, and then so uh, so did you have a Tunisian club you met at or you meet each other <laughs> in the street? Or? Actually, we met in St. Louis, believe it or not. Okay. When you come to St. Louis from the Mediterranean, you, the first thing you start craving is the, the food, you know? Faisal and Lazar are both Tunisians but met each other in St. Louis and have a successful business to show for. That fact alone is a perfect illustration of how beautiful this city can be.
this is like the golden age of uh, food. I think so. It's seen in San Luis. For the last um, 20 years, actually. Yeah, uh, and that's hopefully that. nothing happens to it with this corona. I mean, the whole dining out experience is changing. So if you have like a fantastic neighborhood like Midtown, come back, comes back to life. When we have Benton Park, Lafayette Square, people start venturing out, walking outside. Well, I mean, we're so used to in European cities no, to, sit, to sit, outside, sit outside, have your coffee, yeah, paper, yeah, or song, yeah, yeah. and uh, watch yeah. the world go by. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm sure you feel the same way. A lot of people yeah. come to my restaurant to see me yeah. and see my wife, yeah. and uh, we hug them, yeah, and, it's, and it's part of it, and now you can't do that. And we all need hugs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the energy uh, travels through hugs, you know? Yeah. Uh, you comfort someone when you hug someone. But that's why the food is going to become more important because yes. you're going to have to hug people through your food. Mm. Oh, yes. that's why we've been doing that. <laughs> yeah. Is there a difference between the two eggs, would you say? This is not much difference really as far as kind of what we're trying to do is kind of be part of the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. We consider ourselves artists. Yeah. We're, yeah. Not in True, the, yeah. we're not businessmen. Yeah, <laughs> not, there, not there in for not, the money. There's nothing, yeah. there's nothing in us that screams business. The stories here can go on all day, but when you run a restaurant, you don't have all day. So Faisal has invited me for dinner at his home. Lassi, two tacos, two chorizo. <laughs> I, of course, arrive early to help with the meal. The flavor of the harissa left an impression on me. There is nothing like feeling inspired to get back in the kitchen and cook. Hey, puppy. He has the best taste palate. There you go. What kind of cheese is this? He's not agreeing. So what do you call this? Beet salad. Potatoes, beets, onions, green beans. The vinegar, okay. the salt, pepper, olive oil, lemon. Yeah. And she'll be spaced. This dish. It's pretty much uh, from Tunis, the capital. You know, when do we as chefs get to cook together, you know, in somebody's house? This is perfect. Thank you. You see now, that's how that is, like, it's going to oh, change yeah. people's cool. life, man. Oh, I, beets I, and mayo is the best but marriage. You're you know talking that? to a Danish guy. Potatoes <laughs> and beets. And it's like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's a special container for the couscous. It's the right? couscousier, yeah. They call it couscous, couscousier in French. Couscousier. Couscousier, okay. yeah. There is a 300 different style of couscous. And there's about maybe thousands of ways to make couscous from region to region. So if you are more inland, most of the couscous is like lamb and beef. And if you are in a coastal town, fish like group or sardine, like where the town I'm from, Hamam Sous, they make even couscous with mackerel. When you grew up in Tunis, you are exposed to all the regions of Tunisia. The one I used, they used like a recipe from uh, uh, my grandma, Zora, and my mom, my grandma. She always wanted to do this. When she do the sauce, she goes around like this. The vegetable I use, beets, a little bit of turnip, potatoes in here, garlic, green onions. Zucchini. Most of the time, the fish it cooks last, so you yeah. put it in, in and take it out. I think it's a success, Lassie. Okay. All right. So, like, you know, if it was just you at home, you would all sit and eat from this bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, every, like you get, yeah. like you sit around the yeah. table and you eat, and you have the tapas, the other stuff, yeah. you know. It looks beautiful. All right. I think we're done with this one, okay. uh, Lassie. Okay. All right. This I'll is set the it in here on the table. Yeah. The diversity of Tunisian food comes from the diversity of people who went through that land. We talk about 5,000 years. Like what Faisal was talking about, Tunisia being the crossroad in, in its position in the Mediterranean. It's kind of, uh, everybody pretty much kind of went through it, you know. It was a French colony for 75 years. The culinary culture is shaped by all these cultures that got through there, came through it. And the flavor profile that developed that's now people like fusion food. It is the fusion food basically over centuries. Yeah. It, it came, it became a, a, a distinctive flavor. Here in San Luis, we're trying to kind of bring that flavor profile and those flavors here to our, our customers. So, so do you consider yourself Tunisian or do you consider yourself American now? Oh, we are, uh, you know, we, we are American. But uh, Tunisian from Tunisia, Tunisian, 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 American, Tunisian yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Italian we, American, yeah. Mexican, like I'm Danish, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. We we yeah, embrace we embrace American everything American. here, yeah. but we still try to keep <laughs> some. Definitely, of our, yeah, definitely. I mean, to be a Tunisian, you have to have an olive tree. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have an olive tree somewhere, you're not to be. <laughs> I mean, that's the good thing about America. So America is easy to assimilate here, and that's easy. It's why it's a melting pot, and everybody feels that they're American. It's because an idea, it's an idea. America is an idea. It's not rooted in land like back home. Right? Hearing stories about their experience and their fun reflections of Tunisia reminds me in a lot of ways about my own story. Even Tunisian people in, like in the Midwest, before, before me or Lassa tackled this uh, uh, industry, they don't do it because, oh, no one knows about it. Oh, who's going to buy Mlukhe? I can't even say Kha. Can you see it? <laughs> I can't even sell it. Can yeah, yeah, it's true. Oh. Oh, can you, uh, what about we make some uh, shakshuka? No, 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 shakshuka, they will, but you know, when, when, we, when we start with the breakfast at egg, the pronunciation of it will not be a barrier for you to enjoy a fantastic shakshuka. And then you have the chance to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. How do we say food is love in Tunisian? Mekla, mekla hir hub. Mekla Heya El Hope. Yeah. Mekla El Heya Hope. Yeah, that's what I said. Maybe he said it differently. Nourriture, c'est l'amour. Yeah, this yeah, is our French. French. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Two guys from Tunisia opening a restaurant in St. Louis. Yeah. You know, in order to hammer that through where through, it becomes yeah, a success, it becomes a success that's good. not easy. It's not easy, no. No. So, Lara, cheers to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheers to that. Uh, you did it. Yeah, yeah. Food is love. Food is love. The meal may be over, but we cannot officially call it a night until we've had a coffee together. Oh, I love that aroma. A Tunisian tradition. Think of it as sort of a nightcap, if you will. A nightcap that might keep you up the rest of the night. This, this coffee we call Zazua. Zazua coffee. Okay. The coffee came to Tunisia through the Ottoman Empire. The Turkish brought coffee to Tunis. You know, like for us, the Spanish brought the harissa, the Turkish <laughs> brought the coffee. the coffee. I can make a phone call. Danes can bring some herring. <laughs> Zazua, this one is a household coffee. When you oh. are like sit, hanging out after a long day of work, or okay. in an afternoon in your veranda, usually you have like a, a coffee going, like, or a tea, but for us, coffee, afternoon coffee, yeah. with a little bit of fruit or uh, nuts. It's like the, the French puts a little uh, lemon in their espresso. Wow, oh, this coffee is good. But have you noticed when you look at something and you're waiting for it to boil, it never does. <laughs> as soon as you look away, it boils, yes. But I was so impressed how much you knew about American history and St. Louis. St. Louis is still my home till today, and it was my home for the last 22 years. As I always say, food is <laughs> food love. Is love, yeah. yeah. It's after. It's cool. It's cool. Looking at the city from out here on the river, it's easy to forget that the great fire happened to begin with. That resonates with what Faisal said to me about the resilience of the city. There have been disasters, fires, the unforeseen random sucker punch that knocked the city on its back. Now it's clearly one of those left fielders. But LaSalle was right. This is the golden age of food in St. Louis. But in times of great change, a positive outlook can be the difference between evolving or giving in to the tide. The moral of the story here isn't a moral, it's a history lesson. As Faisal pointed out, we have in some way been here before. Eggs are a universal truth, or at least a good metaphor for one. Eggs are delicate but versatile. You can transform an egg into many different versions of itself. Whether it's a fire, a tornado, or a world pandemic, sometimes things have to break to evolve. It's things that seems to break us, that gives us a platform to create change. I'm really enamored with this harissa. I'm gonna put some of this in the hollandaise. This is what happened when food crosses borders. Tunisian ex Benedict with Scandinavian gravlax. Times like these are a chance to take a lesson from the egg. A lot like eggs, Love is universal and food is love. <laughs>